that's one of the best casts in the history of sitcoms, along with uh, Seinfeld and you know and Cosby Show. But those that cast, everybody, everybody was just so great. The key that started the engine for me with my entire career was actually Def Comedy Jam. I always would give Def Comedy Jam as the thing that made Guy Tory. Yeah, and I, I'm speaking in third person. Because Def Comedy Jam is what inspired me to do stand-up in the first place. When I saw my brother on Def Jam and Martin and Cedric and Eddie Griffin and Bernie Mac and Steve and all those guys and DL and, you know, that's what made me want to do stand-up. And, you know, Bob Sumner, who booked every comic you ever seen on Def Jam, um, saw me, knew Joe had a little brother, and gave me that shot. I did Def Jam after, only after two years of doing stand-up because I, I was grinding. I moved to L.A. I had a marketing job real quick um, with a movie called Zebrahead that Cassandra Butcher put me on, who was John Singleton's publicist. And Zebrahead was a movie with Michael Rappaport and the Bush A. Wright. And, uh, and I was a marketing assistant. I was marketing in college, so I was a marketing assistant for that movie, just, you know, trying to gain awareness for the film and everything. And then I started doing background work, extra work. Um, and then um, I was a PA on Martin, delivering scripts, you know, getting coffee, running errands and stuff like that, cracking jokes on everybody. And then the writers started coming out of the room to get jokes for me to put in the script. You know, we need a joke on, you know, Martin's ears or Gina's head or Pam's you beady beads. Anything in particular that you, that hit the show that you the, came up with? The first thing that, uh, the first joke that I said that hit the scripts was, I think it was a line was, I told somebody in the, in the, <laughs> on the staff, their breath smelled like train smoke. And I believe that's the first one that made it into the episodes. And then they was doing the episode about um, this, uh, when the CD player got, was stolen. I think one of, one of the things I had, uh, Tina Turner's greatest hits or something like that. And then I end up, uh, Martin would always say, hey man, sit in the room, man, learn how to write. He would always check on me. And then third season, because the second season I was a PA, third season I ended up writing an episode of Martin that got produced. Uh, Which one was that one? It was an episode called uh, Romantic Weekends. It's when they went on this island, got attacked by this big ass rat. So that was my first script I co-wrote with a guy named Matt Diamond, uh, who's a writer's assistant. What was that animal, by the way? That animal, we don't know what the animal was. We just put a little fuzzy animal, and then the uh, property department went and made this little fuzzy thing with a remote control and everything. Now, how much, how much of that was improv when they were fighting it? Did y'all kind of say, yo, y'all have an epic battle, or did they put some extra on to it? Cause Every episode of Martin was a lesson. Being there on the set, seeing what was on the page and what Martin did with it and what that cast did with it, that's one of the best casts in the history of sitcoms, along with uh, Seinfeld and, you know, and the Cosby Show. But those, that cast, everybody, everybody was just so great. And Martin would take something like this and make it like that. I mean, he would just improv. And, and it, it kind of was a blessing and a curse because it made some of the writers, not all, some of those writers lazy. Cause they knew they could just write anything and Martin was gonna make it funny. But you didn't want to do that to Martin all the time. Let, you know, make it, you're getting paid to write, so put it on the page and Martin will do what he do, do with it. Let it be foolproof before I even get to Martin. So, but Martin, man, what he would do was just insane, man. And with that episode with the rat, I mean, we didn't, we don't give direction. You know, we just put, you know, I just wrote what was supposed to be written and Martin and um, Tashina Arnold and and uh, Tisha Campbell, man, and, you know, rest in peace, Tommy. I mean, they just, they took it to that, to that level, man. It's just, it's just a great cast, man. It was great synergy with them.